now that we can open and close our chest we will have to add some slots to it so that we can take our items and store them in the chest and our um, our back here or not our back but our chest is actually going to be an extension of our inventory so it, it just when we open the chest it extends our inventory so we can put stuff in the chest and close it again and then maybe get back to it later and take it out of the chest so how do you do that well we already have some prefabs for creating bags and stuff so we can actually reuse some of this um, there's some things we need to do it differently so we need to create a new chess script but for now let's just uh, do it manually here and then we are going to go to the script in a moment and add the slots to the back from the script um, and I would like to or at least I'm going to create it so that um, the chest has a specific size, the fixed size, 48 slots for example. All my chests are going to have those slots. Um, if you want different size of chests, you can of course al always um, experiment with that if you want to. But for now, I'm just going to say all chests in my game have the same size. So I'm going to take it back and put it in the canvas. This back here is going to be my chest. I'm just going to move it up a little. I would like to have it above the tooltip so that tooltip doesn't go behind the back though. Rename the back to chest. That's my chest. Um, and then I would like to add some slots to it. The reason I'm doing this manually right now is because I want to set up the UI so it looks correct. And I would like 48 slots. Let's see here. Just duplicate these a couple of times. I have here 24, 36. It's 48, but however, there's one without a number, so we need to have. So it says 47 is the highest one. This looks weird, so just select the chest and then you can go to the constraint count and maybe put it at 8. So I feel like this size here is a good size for a chest. Where do I want to put it? Well, you can put it wherever you want to in your game. I think I'm going to center it right now. Um, let's see how it looks when I play the game. Yeah, so it's centered on top of my player. It doesn't make sense actually. So let's try to put it upwards to the top here when I open it up right there I guess let's try to run it now okay so now it's not centered so when I open up the chest this will pop up and I can put my items in it okay. so now we have created the UI we actually need to delete these slots again because now we have the right position for our chest we can select the chest and go down here and say that um, block ray casts are off and the alpha is zero because it's closed right now so these two things are something we need to add when we open up the chest, of course. Okay. So as I said, we have some functionality in our inventory. However, when we open up a script, let's see here, let's see if we can find inventory. Let's find a back script. A back creates its own slots when it's used, right? So when we use a back, it creates the slots for us. So you can see it's um, there's a use function somewhere. Um, okay, I'm not going to find that right there. Um, however, it, it has that use function. Um, and that's when we right click on a bag or equip it. Our chest doesn't have that. We can't right click on a chest to create the slots because we need those slots all time, at all times, right? So we have the chest script. Just as we have something called slot, we have two things. We have a slot and a slot script. We're going to do the same with our, um, um, with our, our chest. So we're going to create a chest script as well. Let's go out here and inside the inventory we can right click create C sharp and write chest script. This is our chest script. The chest script is going to be attached to the chest here on the UI. So select the chest and just take the chest script and just drag it onto it actually. So it runs up there. Uh, the chest script is not going to be there at the same time as the back script. So we can just right click on the back script and remove it. And then we can open up the chest script and make sure the chest script in here is from back script. So these two are basically the same. However, there's one thing we need to do different. In the start function, we have to um, what's called use it or actually let's do it in a wake. We know that works. We have to say add slots. How many slots do we want? We want 48 for this chest. So we just need to say that every chest we have in the game has 48 slots. So on awake we're going to add slots. So that means if I save that now and I play my game uh, without maximize though, let's see here. Maximize remove, there we go. 
you'll see that okay it didn't create anything why didn't it well i forgot to assign the slot prefab so let's do that before we test it again the slot prefab is there oh we can't find it there let's see here if we go to prefabs inventory slot there we go so now it has the slot prefab on it let's try again and there we go so now our chest has 48 slots on it which means if i would show it go we have our inventory stuff here okay. so let's make sure we can see it when we interact with the chest okay so let's go to the chest we need to go up here and we need to create a canvas group and we need to serialize this just to make it easier for us to sign it and what else do we need to do we can say i think that's it actually let's just try it we have our it's open then we stop if it's not open then we open it and we say canvas group dot alpha is one canvas group dot block raycast true so that we can interact with it by clicking basically we need to take these two and put them down in stop interact as well and reverse them so that oops not that one so that block raycast is false when we close it so that we don't it doesn't block anything else we're trying to do if we forget to do this then it might block us clicking on an enemy somewhere in the game the alpha needs to go to zero as well there we go okay let's try to save so now we should be able to do this so if we select the chest in the game right there let's call this one chest ui or something just so we can differ them easier chest ui and chest we see we have a canvas group here the canvas group is on the chest ui so let's see here if i go to the chest and i right click on it i can show and hide the um, inventory here now okay so that's good what will happen if i take an item and put it inside the chest well it goes to the chest and i can go away and it's still there however what if i have two chests if i duplicate my chest right there and i add it and put it up here well that's then there's going to be a problem because if i go up here and open up my other chest then it has the same um items in it and usually you wouldn't want that right you wouldn't really want the items to be inside um, the same chest there we can also see a problem something we need to fix later that if i put an item up here it's going to show the UI element uh, up top, so we also fix that later. Anyway, we don't want that in general. Some places you might want that in World of Warcraft, I think banks are shared. So if you have a bank, of course, all the items are still in the bank if you go to another city or something. But I feel like if we want a chest here, we'd like to store different things in the chests. If, if you don't, if you want to share the items, you can skip the next step. But I would like to have the items just in one chest. So what do we do? We will create a list of items. So let's make a private list of items. And these items will, um, belong. These, this list will contain all items that belongs to this specific chest. The reason we can do that is because each chest in the game has this script on it. So it will have its own items. And this is also later when we need to save all the items. Of course, we are going to add a save function all the items in your chest should also be saved so we can just save this list okay. that's also something we are going to do later okay so we have the items uh, what do we need to do we need to instantiate the list and we need to add some items to the list let's just instantiate right here so we're sure that it's null it's fine and we need to add a function called add items let's see here make public void add items oh wow there we go add items so if let's just make sure items isn't null so if it isn't null then we run through um, items Oh, actually I'm getting a little ahead of myself sorry about that just comment this out for now because add items when is that called it needs to be called when we open up the chest because um, in general we put a lot of items in the chest and they will be visible to us 
So when we close down the chest, we need to store those items because there's no, uh, we don't know if we're going to open up the same chest next time or another chest. So we need to remove them and, and such. So let's store them first. Let's make a new function called store items. What is store items going to do? It's going to be very simple. It's going to take items. And we're going to take a bag. Okay, what's a bag? Well, the bag is a reference to uh, the bag script. So we need to go up here and make a private bag script. And it just, this could also be chest script for that matter, but we don't need any functionality for the chest. Just use the bag script. We need to take all items. And how do we get the items? I think we have a function for that. Yeah, we have a function called get items. If you remember, then get items on the, um, the back script returns all the items stored in the back. So let's say we have put five items in our chest. Well, store items is going to be called when we close down the chest. So all the items in the chest will be stored inside the items list. We take all the items and just put them into the list. This will actually instantiate the items list. So this instantiation is actually not users used. We just do like that. So to sum up, we create a list of items. This list will contain all items in our, our chest after we close it so we can load them up later when we open up the chest again. How do you do that? Well, store items will be called when we close down the chest. That is if I click on the chest to close it or if I walk away from it. We have a function on the back called get items that will return all items stored in a bag. Well, our chest is actually a bag, so this returns all the items that we can see in the bag, the sword, the helmet, or whatever we have put in the chest, and it returns it to the items list, so we have stored them. Okay. On stop interact, we actually have to clear all our items. We have to say bag.clear. We don't have a clear function. And we need to add that. So we actually need to go to the back script. Let's see if we have it. Let's go to inventory over here. Maybe it's open already. I don't know. Back script. And we need to make a function called clear. We don't have it already, do we? Just private. Nope, we don't. Okay. So let's make a public function called clear. Clear is simply going to clear the back. So it's going to say for each slot script in our slots we're simply going to take the slot and clear it so this will just clear out a bag so now we have functionality for clearing a bag with that done we can go to our stop interact function on the chest and say bag dot clear okay so with this fixed we can try one more time let's try to put an item in Oh, let's just make two chests right away. Duplicate this chest and put something just up here. So this would work. Uh, let's say we open up this chest. Oh wow, there's an exception. Let's see why that is. There's something I've forgotten to assign, isn't there? Chest stop interact. Yeah, okay, back to clear. We don't have a reference to the back, I guess. So we have to set that um, reference up. And where is it? It's this back script here. It of course needs to be serialized. And then we save, go back here, select both our chests. We have a unassigned in second there. So we take the, uh, where is it, the chest and move it to there. So the chest UI is bound to the chest back. Okay, so they both have reference to this UI. Uh, th not the UI, but the actual chest script on it okay let's try again I can go here intact without reference exceptions if I put in some shoulders and stuff and let's say I close this down and I go up here nothing is here but if I go down here nothing's there either so we made sure that we don't see duplicated items or we don't see the same items in both ch chests but they also disappear from the original chest. So we need to make sure they don't disappear. And uh, now we can continue on this. I got ahead of myself before. But now we can start on this. So let's make it for each. And call item item in items. Okay. 
So for each item we have stored, we are already storing these. When we close down the chest, this function is called uh, because it's um, called in stop interact. Or actually, it's not even called. Yes, it is. Oh no, it's not. Sorry, uh, it's not called because we're not calling it here. So basically, we need to do this. We need to say store items when we stop interact. This doesn't change anything what I just showed. But okay, when we close down the chest, we store all our items in the list. But we're not getting the items back when we open the chest again. So how do you do that? Well, we do it with using by using the add items function. The add items function takes all the stored items in the chest and basically shows them to the user. So add items is actually a way of showing everything that's stored in the chest to the user by putting it back in the chest when we open it up. Because right now the UI is one thing, the chest is something else. So the UI is just a way of showing you what's in the chest and all the stored items needs to be shown to the player. So we take it for each and we say item dot my slot add item. What item do we need to add? We need to add the item. So well this looks weird, right? We're using the items itself, the slot that it has on it, and add the same item to that slot because the item has a reference to the slot it belongs to at all times. And because of this, we can put the item back on the exact same slot in the inventory when we do this. So we use the item's own reference to add it to its own slot right there. So this is the same item as this one. So it might be a little confusing, but that's exactly what we're doing. When do we need to call add items? We need to call it when we interact, and that's right here. So before we open it, we say add items so that we can see the items right away when the chest is open. And save. So let's test this and see if it works. So we can open up this chest, and we can take some items and put it in there. Let's take some shoulders and a, uh, what's it called, a weapon and this offhand, put them right there. And if I move away, up here, there are no items in this chest. However, if I go down here, there are items here. And I would be able to go up here and add some more items here. Let's say pants and sword. These two are there. And these two are here. So now we have storage that is not dependent on each other. Just want to show you this. If I first mouse click on this chest, I will get a null reference exception. Of course, that's something we need to fix. So don't worry if you have an error when you click on the wrong mouse button on the chest. That's, uh, of course, supposed to happen because you can't select it like you can with an enemy. So an easy fix is just to check for the enemy attack. Uh, right down here, we're checking for the enemy attack. Just take that code and you can find the error by clicking on something, double clicking on the error here, and it shows the errors right there. And that's inside this if statement. So just make an end and do like this. So if the hit collider is an enemy. So if we hit an enemy, then this is going to happen. So if you save that, you should avoid that annoying um, reference exception. Let's try. Wow, my unity is slow. Yeah, so now we don't have that. We can still go close to it and interact with it. Okay, so that's it. Now we have separated bank storage. And as I said, if you want to keep the same storage, then don't implement the list. Uh, but we're going to use the list for saving um, the, the, the items in the chest uh, later. So thank you very much for watching. And of course, if you find any bugs with this, I haven't tested this a lot. I just implemented it and I saw it worked. Um, try to do a lot of things. I'm getting a lot of emails about different things that are a little broken that we, fi we will fix. Uh, so every time you find a little bug, please let me know because then we can fix it in the next video. So play around with it, test it out, figure out, try to break the system. Uh, that helped me out a lot. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.